Uh, thanks, Will, <clears throat> and thanks for the question. Some of the questions that I heard in our ENC meeting this morning were just about that, the 9,000 permits that are out there. I um, want to ask the CEOs why they're not producing those and let them explain what Steve just said, but take it a little further. There are hundreds of permits that have to be garnered by the oil and gas companies from both federal and state agencies to run pipelines to get the product once it's produced from the well to the refinery. Um, transmission lines and all these things produce a well. Plus, every lease that you buy, you're speculating. There's not water under every square inch of your yard and there's not oil under every square inch of a lease cell. So they have to explore exploration cost and then production cost and then getting that product to the refinery is very important. Another thing that I, I believe we'll hear is the Biden administration is using a lot of other agencies like the Security and Exchange Commission to target big oil. And what they're saying is you've got to show us your climate change or, or uh, carbon footprint. If you know banking uh, uh, banks are making loans to pipeline companies, then the pipeline company they're loaning money to because the SEC and the, and the Federal Reserve are now requiring banks to find out what that pipeline's carbon footprint is. So they're using a lot of agencies to push their green initiative because they know they can't get it through Congress. As a non-starter here, they fail time and again. And it doesn't work for the American people. The American taxpayers are paying their hard-earned dollars for inflated grocery prices and inflated fuel prices at the pump. And we're hearing it. We're hearing it every day. If you think about this, the average 18-wheeler has 300-gallon diesel tank. And so for every dollar of fuel price increase, that's $300 added to what it takes to fill that trucker up as he's moving those uh, goods across this country. That's $1,200, $1,500 a fill-up if prices are $4, $5. That's a lot of money for that trucker. He's not paying it. His trucking company's not paying it. They're passing it on the consumer. And that fuel prices is related to the inflated prices of consumer goods across this country. So we're going to talk with that about a lot of those issues tomorrow. We're going to talk about uh, increased production, what uh, energy companies can do globally to increase production. Because in economics, you have supply and demand. And demand is high as the economy is coming back globally in the post-COVID era. Supplies, because of the failed Biden um, energy policies, supplies in the United States are down. We're producing about a million and a half barrels less today than we did when he was inaugurated. Prices are up 81 percent. If you think about less production and greater demand just here at home, you kind of understand why these fell by American energy policies um, and this war on American energy are not working. That I'll yield back. Well, here's the question that you ought to ask. Why is the SEC asking for this? Are there going to be penalties imposed? Um, you know, and that's questions we're asking. In fact, I would ask you guys to reach out to Andy Barr uh, from Kentucky. He's been a leader on this issue for this conference on what the SEC and the Federal Reserve and others are doing um, with asking these ESG questions, right? So um, Garrett Graves is another great one that can, can talk about that. I hope tomorrow that a lot is shown on... Uh, what it cost for American energy companies to lease property from the federal government, um, explore a well, establish that well, all the other permits involved, and what it takes to get the first drop of oil or natural gas from that wellhead to the market, both upstream, midstream, and downstream. That's upstream producers, midstream that are carrying those products to the market, and then the petroleum marketers that have to make a, a profit at the end of the day. And they're seeing fewer people show up at their gas stations because of fuel prices. More people are staying at home. It's costing moms and dads just to do the normal things of taking their kids to the ball game, taking their kids to school, traveling to work to earn the money that's going to pay for that fuel, and going to church to worship their God every Sunday. It's costing them more today, and it's wrong. We have, as I said earlier, we're blessed here in America with the natural resources that we have proven that we can produce and lessen the cost for American families and be a net exporter to help the quality of lives for so many people around the globe. That was proven under President Trump's term. That was killed on day one by Joe Biden, and American families are paying for it.
Yeah, and think about the financing. Uh, Joe Biden, uh, through the SEC, ESG, they're trying to block financing to any oil and gas projects to make it harder for them to even get the funding to do it in America. So when you think about oil and gas production, Joe Biden is harder on American companies than he is on Putin. Go ask Joe Biden, when has he asked these questions of Putin when they're producing? They're producing oil, too, that's coming into America. Do they ask for the carbon footprint of it? Because I can tell you, it's a lot higher than the carbon footprint of oil and gas made in America. There's no country that has the standards we have. So if you're concerned about carbon emissions, you should be wanting to produce more energy in America, not getting it from some of these dictators around the world who don't have our standards. Yeah. What do you think of the $10 billion COVID relief bill uh, negotiated by Mitt Romney in the Senate, and will uh, Republican leadership support it when it eventually comes to the House? Well, we haven't seen the final details, nor how many other Republicans in the Senate, if they even have 60 votes to move it. One of the things we've been talking about is getting the economy open. Uh, the best way right now uh, to, to get relief to families and small businesses is to open up all the economy end all the mandates, all these things they're doing to make it harder for people to go back to work, trying to fire people if they don't get vaccinated. Let people get back to work. Let's open the economy again. That'll solve a lot of these problems. Yeah. What's your reaction to Congressman Huffman retiring and uh, who is likely to be left to lead the party with the support that the House Republicans get in the election? I just saw that. Uh, Fred just made the announcement. Um, you know, clearly, if you look, redistricting had a lot to do with that because we've got a few races across the country where two Republicans were pitted against each other. Uh, there in Michigan, uh, the legislature drew Fred Upton in with Bill Huizenga. So you had two Republican members running against each other. And I think Fred said, look, he's had a long career, distinguished. He talked about things like 21st century cures, uh, a bill I think that for generations to come will help cure more diseases. In fact, some of the reforms to FDA in 21st century cures were used by President Trump in Operation Warp Speed to find not one, not two, but three different vaccines for COVID. So, you know, this was a decision he had to make looking at the dynamics of a member on member race. And, and it's unfortunate. We've got a few of them, like I said, around the country where it's Republican against Republican. But overall, I think you're going to see a wave of Republicans flipping seats that are currently held by Democrats to Republican because I think the country's fed up with big government socialism. Can I just add that Fred yeah. Upton will be missed. He's been a leader on Energy and Commerce Committee for so long. And um, 21st Century Cures came through that committee under Fred's leadership. He'll be yeah. missed. Um, Speak of the, yeah. So I'm just saying that, you know, Fred Upton will be missed by conference, by conference and by Congress. He has been a, a real leader on Energy and Commerce. He has set some standards for us to, uh, for Kathy to, uh, to lead by. So um, he's going to be missed. At the same time, Bill Huizenga, we hated the fact that those two were drawn in because we're uh, friends with both of them. So uh, now it kind of frees Bill up to focus on his November race and get a Republican, get him back in that seat from Michigan. So I wanted to say that Fred would be missed. Yeah, when you look at Fred's legacy, you know, he's got a long list. 21st Century Cures is one I bring up just because uh, I worked with him a lot on it. But he, he made that happen. That bill would not have become law. And there are a lot of other examples of that. Yes, sir. Well, it's not patriotic to shut off American energy. And one of the reasons that the prices are so high is because President Biden artificially limited the ability for America to produce energy. And what that means is we're a free market economy. And I think people maybe they don't recognize that when you look at oil production around the world, it's not a free market. OPEC is a cartel. It's a monopoly. And they want the price to be high. Russia wants the price to be high because Putin is using this windfall to finance his war against Ukraine. Joe Biden can take that pressure away. He can take that leverage that these other actors out there, not only dictators like Putin, but also cartels like OPEC. He can take away their leverage just by opening up American energy because here, if you remove all the roadblocks from the Department of Energy, the Department of Interior, the EPA, the SEC, name your alphabet soup of acronyms, every one of those federal agencies is blocking American energy. If you unleash that, because we're a free market, people will produce and drill all around the country and the price will go down. There's no other country that produces energy that operates in a free market. And by shutting off American energy, Joe Biden has turned energy production over to cartels, monopolies, and dictators. That's what's killing 
American families. That's why the price is so high. We want the price to be lower by producing more in America. Thank you all.